Hello and welcome to the episode 352 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas, the Beatles' last Hamburg residency, their first BBC special and the birth of Bagism are some of the highlights of today's episode. Let's start our show with the 18th of December 1961 performance that the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best on drums, gave at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. It was the band's 66th lunchtime performance at the venue. One year later, in 1962, we find the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, taking a plane to Hamburg, West Germany. It was the band's fifth visit to the German city, with 13 concerts in 14 nights, one per evening until the end of the year, with a day off on Christmas Day, and a raised fee of 750 Deutsche Mark per man per week, about 1,440 pounds in 2020 money. Nevertheless, the band wasn't particularly happy about having to honor the engagement. Their focus was now 100% on the British market, and they would have liked to stay and work their hardest to become a national sensation, rather than earning easy money far away. Nevertheless, begrudgingly, the band was on the stage of the Star Club on this same night. On the 18th of December 1963, instead, the Beatles were busy with the recording session. It was not for one of their record releases, though. The band was busy at the ABC Paris studio from 7 to 10.30 pm, taping their first two-hour Christmas special, From Us to You. The band altered From Me to You to serve as signature tune for the show, also performing She Loves You, All My Loving, Roll Over Beethoven, Till There Was You, Boys, Money, That's What I Want, I Saw Her Standing There, and I Want to Hold Your Hand. In addition to the music, the Fabs exchanged jokes with show host Rolf Harris, performing a humorous re-edition of his 1960 hit, Timey Kangaroo Dance Sport. The show also featured other acts, Susan Morgan, Janie Lambie, Kenny Lynch, Joe Brown and the Brothers, the Kenny Salmon Seven, Alan Eldson's jazz band with Mick Emery, and, naturally, the host Rolf Harris and his comedy sketches. The show was broadcast by BBC Radio on the 26th of December between 10 am and 12 noon, with so much success that BBC made sure to record another four bank holiday specials featuring the Beatles in the next 18 months. Two things happened on this date in 1966. In the morning, Tara Brown, friend of the Beatles and heir of the Guinness Empire, died in a car crash. The event, reported in the papers, inspired John Lennon to write a day in the life, as we saw in episode 17 of the podcast. In the evening, instead, Paul McCartney and his then-girlfriend Jane Asher attended the premiere of the film The Family Way, for which Paul had written the soundtrack with the help of George Martin. The event took place at the Warner Cinema in London. With your help, instead, I will be able to keep on producing music-related content like this podcast or better. If you are wondering how you can help, please visit www.simonmas.com support, where you will also find how to acquire the exclusive NFTs with the deluxe version of this podcast, with literally hours of extra content. Thank you for helping and show me how fab you are. And now let's have John and Yoko take over the rest of the show. On the 18th of December 1968, the couple appeared on the stage of the Royal Albert Hall in London during the underground Christmas party happening. The event had been organized by Arts Lab and tried to turn the audience from passive spectators into active participants in the creation of art. 
John and Yoko's bit was a conceptual performance called Alchemical Wedding, and it was the first time they used the bag to hide from the public as a mean of satire and as a challenge to prejudice about what the performance was meant to be. For the whole 13 minutes of their performance, John and Yoko just sat in their white bag as a man played the flute, and a protester took over the stage, holding a banner against the British involvement in the Nigerian Civil War and asking John if he cared at all. One year later, in 1969, John Lennon and Yoko Ono had a busy day. Having reached Toronto, Canada, to promote their new idea to bring over peace on Earth, the couple recorded a message for a Japanese radio station. Naturally, Yoko did most of the talking, while John seemed content to play acoustic guitar in the background. The whole thing lasted more or less 10 minutes. Later in the day, the couple recorded more media material. First, an interview for CBC TV, with Nick Steed and Ken Kavanagh. Then, they talked very briefly with a reporter of the Associated Press. Needless to say, all of the media appearances focused on the peace campaign. John Lennon admitted that it might all have been a bit naive, but, he added, so were the Beatles when they were still playing the Cavern Club. If the idea of peace could have a similar success, then he would have reached his goal. John also spoke briefly of the Beatles' forthcoming release of Larry B, and, for the second time, about a music festival he wanted to organize in Toronto's Mossport Park, which never happened. What will happen for sure, instead, is that tomorrow you'll get another episode of What a Fab Day. Quick, but as intense as I can make it. Today's episode, instead, is over. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.